Hey everyone, welcome to my game development log. My name is Kenna, and in this series, I'm going to be sharing my journey in learning game development. As a beginner, I've only worked on a few projects so far, mostly web games using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Most recently, I did some work in Godot for a game jam where I did all of the art. I also have some experience coding in different languages like Python and C Sharp. Because I'm learning so much, I thought it would be beneficial to share everything online. Hopefully, it can be useful to you or anyone else. But first, a little about me before we get into what I've done so far. I've always been interested in games. I grew up being obsessed with games like Pokemon and Minecraft and would get lost in the worlds I made for hours every day after school. Any conversation with friends, family, or teachers centered around video games. The most interesting aspect for me was always the mechanics, strategy, and storyline behind every piece. Every day, I got to experience those worlds, and as a result, I wanted to give that experience to others as well. I was that annoying kid posting on forums asking people if they wanted to team up with me to make games. I was just a kid, but I loved art. I would always generously offer my crude pixel and paint art services in exchange for someone with valuable coding knowledge to bring my vision to life. For free. As you can guess, that didn't work out too well. But as I got older, my interest led me to taking coding classes in high school and college. And step by step, I'm getting closer to that dream. In this series, I'm going to be exploring various aspects of game development, sharing my experiences and tips along the way. I'll talk about my experience learning everything from programming and art to sound design and marketing. I hope that this series will be helpful for other aspiring game developers out there and that we can all learn and grow together. During the game jam, I had to learn very quickly how to design characters for a video game, import the characters, and rig them for animation and movement in-game. It was a tough challenge, but it was also a lot of fun. The experience really opened up my eyes to the complexity of game development and made me realize just how much there is to learn. Now that I have that part out of the way, the next step is for me to learn how to manipulate a world of code and functionality around my art. But before that process can start, I had to think of some kind of theme or idea to even make. As a beginner, I often find myself struggling to come up with ideas for games. It's intimidating to look at all the great games online and think to myself, how do they do that? My biggest struggle has been that I don't want to choose something that's too complex, but I also don't want to be stuck coding something like Flappy Bird, which I'm not that interested in. While it may not be the best idea, I want to focus on learning how to design and code different game mechanics instead of deciding on one and forcing myself to go for it. While this is probably the worst possible way to lean into creating a fun or fully realized game, that's not really my goal. I'm committed to keeping my scope wide open and learning as I go in order to find out what I like most. When brainstorming ideas to make, I thought about games that I enjoyed playing and mechanics that I liked. I really enjoy sandbox and farming simulator type games like Minecraft and Stardew Valley. Something about collecting items and then learning better ways to automate or expedite the collection of items is so fun to me. But one thing that always keeps me from playing these games over and over is that the game never really ends. I'm sure you can relate. I have so many Minecraft worlds that I've abandoned before even defeating the Ender Dragon, mostly because the game was just too broad and there were too many things to do. I thought about some other games that I enjoy and one theme that stuck out was strategy. I've always liked Pokemon for the collection and battle mechanics. Later in life, I learned about games like Catan and Super Auto Pets that center around building a team or colonizing an area and defending from other players, so I took note of that as well. I also thought about the style and theme of the game. I really like plants, so maybe I can make something about plants in a forest? I was really drawing blanks, so I started plugging some of my ideas into ChatGPT to see if I could get a theme pinned down. One idea of forests and light came up. Something like a character defending a small colony from darkness by finding resources that create light? This idea generating is a lot harder than I thought, I'm really just spitballing here. All this idea generating has me bored. I know that I want to make a game about a forest and include the idea of light somewhere, so I let myself jump into some coding and designing to loosen up and at least get started. Like I said, it's not about the whole picture right now, it's about having fun. So I started on drawing a simple mushroom character and made a green background to symbolize the floor. The movement style I was going for is something like Don't Starve Together, where the basic elements are placed on a 2D ground plane with a 3D quality to it the character in a 3 fourth view, and the ability to move around the canvas in all directions, minus any kind of jumping. 
The main mechanics of the player are to move around and interact with items in the game world, similar to Stardew Valley. I made my character in Adobe Illustrator and exported it to Photoshop in order to save each body part as its own cropped PNG image using a Photoshop script. I organized those drawings into their own folders for the ground and player. Next, I was ready to make my game. I opened up Godot and... Okay, I might need to look up some tutorials. But before I do that, I can work on conquering the things I do know how to do in Godot. In the game jam I mentioned before, I learned how to make a simple skeleton-like character, so animating everything came easy to me. Before doing that, I started with importing my assets that I had made and made a world scene to serve as my canvas for moving my character. Then I created some animations for my mushroom man. I guess that's his name now? I don't know. I just came up with it. So I made Mushroom Man exist under a kinematic 2D body node so that I can script and control the character using code. I made a child node within the kinematic 2D and put my sprites in, making sure to parent them to the appropriate body parts. For this character, the torso is the highest node, so it acts as kind of a global parent of sorts. I also made sure to position the anchors for the nodes at the correct pivot points so that I can manipulate my character with rotation and position. Using the animation player node, I created a timeline animation for walking and idle, which I could call in the kinematic 2D nodes script to bring my character to life. Next up was figuring out how to move my character on screen with some Godot scripting. I followed a tutorial by Heartbeat, which I've linked in the description below. This tutorial taught me how to move my character around the screen in the exact way that I wanted. So I followed his tutorial and here's my character moving around. After that, I made my character have some velocity, resistance, and speed ramping in order to make it look more natural. After working a few hours on that, I felt extremely satisfied. Taking the first step into making my game was nerve-wracking and intimidating, but I did it, and now I can keep working towards fleshing out more of the game. In the next video, I hope to explore more functionality and interactions that I can make with the character. But until then, thank you for watching my video. I know it was short, but there's more exciting things coming in the future. So if you like my content so far and want to follow my progress, please feel free to subscribe. Also, I'll be happy to answer any questions or feedback in the comments below. See you in the next video.